So it's the end of a year and around this time, everyone, including myself now, kind of likes to do wrap up posts or wrap up videos, talk about some of their favorite stuff throughout the year. And since I focus on tech and the iPad and apps and things like that, I figured let's wrap up talking about some of my favorite things from this year. Now, 2020 has been a, well, we'll just call it an interesting year and move on. But as far as tech goes, we've gotten a lot of really cool stuff. So let's kind of go ahead and just jump into it. So the first thing I want to mention is the iPhone 12. And th this right here is the iPhone 12 Pro. But the whole lineup is really interesting. Um, I, I got one of the things I've basically been asking for forever. Finally, a blue iPhone. Uh, very, very excited about that. I know it's not a big deal to a lot of people, but I've always wanted a blue iPhone. Uh, plus the flat edges, which I like a lot. Uh, overall, it's it's an incremental improvement over all the other iPhones. They just get better and better every year. Um, there's not really anything that you know was game changing about this iPhone, except for one thing. The, the, the MagSafe thing. I actually really like the MagSafe wallet. Um, I don't know why a lot of people didn't like it at the beginning. Um, I mean, it's a fairly strong magnet, but when you pull it away, it does come off. Um, like you, you don't want your, you know, it to be magnetically attached there forever, like super glue or something, and then you could never get to your wallet. But no, I really like it. It's one less thing I have to like worry about in my pockets. Uh, eventually, I would love to get to this world where like my car keys are on my phone, my house keys are on the phone. I know I know that is possible right now, but in my current situation, I can't do it. Uh, but now I have my wallet right there, plus Apple Pay and stuff like that. So this whole setup has been really nice for me. I really like it. Next up is the Magic Trackpad. Now this isn't new. This isn't something that came out in 2020. In fact, it's been around for a while. This is the Magic Trackpad 2. But this year with iPad OS 13.4, the iPad got trackpad and mouse support, true trackpad and mouse support. Uh, and I picked one of these up as soon as that was announced. And I've literally used this every single day uh, since that's been out. I, I absolutely love this thing. It's all part of my desk setup, which I'm going to be doing a uh, big, actually I'm gonna be doing two desk setup videos here pretty soon. So uh, keep an eye out for those. But yeah, um, this has been a big part about how I use my iPad at my desk. It also supports all the gestures and everything that you possibly could want a trackpad to do on a computer, it works on the iPad. And it works well for the Mac too, which was its originally intended purpose. Speaking of working at a desk, uh, a lot of people have been spending this year working from home. And one thing that I've really been thinking about a lot this year is the ergonomics of working from home. So that's where this comes in. This is the Lamical laptop stand. Now, uh, I love this thing because it gets the iPad up to a good working height. And then when you pair it with the Magic Keyboard, which I, uh, we'll get to that, um, this works really well for a kind of desk setup for an iPad. Um, I'm really happy with this. I love how this kind of ha has worked out in my setup. And, and it's got a good design too. It's kind of, you know, if Apple was to ever design a laptop stand, not that they ever will, but if they were, I'd imagine it would look something similar to this, but probably cost like four times the amount. So we talked about the trackpad, we talked about a laptop stand, but you also need a keyboard to go with that. This is the Keychron K8 keyboard. Uh, I really like the whole Keychron lineup. I had the K2 for a while. I, I, I just gave it away. Um, I like the K8 because it's more spaced out as far as the keys. So like it's not all clumped together in like one solid row. The arrow keys are off on their own. There's a gap for the function keys and stuff like that. Uh, the way I learned how to type is to orient your hands on the home row and not look down at the way you're typing. Uh, just feel on the keyboard so you can kind of know where, know where all the keys are and you could just look at the screen without looking at the keyboard and you could type like that. Um, and this keyboard, it, it's a lot easier to do that as opposed to the K2. So this is my new favorite mechanical keyboard. It's wireless. I use the blue switches. Um, you can plug it in if you want that, but I like the wireless mode because it gives a nice cleaner setup. Plus I can move it around a little more in easily and stuff like that. So highly, highly recommend any of the Keychron keyboards. Um, they have a lot of different styles. They have different key switches. So it kind of depends on what you personally like. But me, I like the K8 just because the, the keys are more spaced out. Okay, so we did get a new iPad Pro this year too, but it really wasn't that interesting. It had the A12Z chip, which just gave it one more GPU core as opposed to the A12X, uh, LiDAR sensor, which Eh. and a few extra gigs of RAM. But I would say the iPad that was the most interesting this year would be the iPad Air. 
The iPad Air got a major redesign and now looks a lot similar to the iPad Pro. It got the A14 chip, USB-C stereo speakers when it's in landscape, support for the Magic Keyboard. Seriously, it got a lot of stuff in here and this was a phenomenal upgrade over the previous generation iPad Air. Um, I, I would say this as far as like actual iPad, this was the biggest upgrade of 2020. Uh, hands down, there really isn't even a close competition even with there being a new iPad Pro this year. So uh, I would say this is kind of the default iPad for most people and it's definitely become one of my favorite iPads to use when like sitting on the couch and just like going through art RSS feeds or Twitter or watching videos or something like that. This has been my favorite because of how, how light and portable it is. Um, I typically don't keep this one in a keyboard case as opposed to my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So I just kind of pick this one up and, and use it. So I alluded to it already a little bit, but my favorite piece of hardware in 2020 has been the Magic Keyboard. The Magic Keyboard for iPad change the way a lot of people, including myself, can use the iPad. So it's a keyboard case that you can put your iPad in and it has a keyboard, but it also has a trackpad. So it basically makes your iPad a laptop. But when you want it to be a tablet again, it's really easy just to pop it right out and use it as a tablet. I, I am absolutely in love with the Magic Keyboard. It's been my favorite tech product of 2020, absolutely. Okay, so I do have one honorable mention and I've only had it for a few days. So that's why I'm not really calling it one of my favorites because I don't feel like I've had it long enough to justify it. Maybe I'll throw it on next year's list because it came out really late, but it's the AirPods Max. I'm in love with these. Uh, I They're very comfortable to me. Now I've heard different people talk about the comfortability in different ways and things like that. Um, for me personally, I prefer over the ear headphones as opposed to stuff that goes in your ear. Uh, so you get all the great AirPods tech, like the instant pairing and the swapping between devices and the H1 chip and all that stuff but in over ear headphones and they sound phenomenal. Now I'm not an audiophile person. I can't tell you about like the highs are at this decibel level and the lows hit this frequency. I, I can't tell you any of that stuff, um, but I can tell you they sound great and they're very enjoyable to use. Now I'm gonna be working on a full review. Uh, I delayed my review a little bit because I really wanted to use these in my workflow, not just like playing music, but I wanted to see, can I edit video on them? Am I able to edit podcast? Hint, hint something coming, hint, hint. Um, you know, am I able to actually use these in my workflow? So a full review of these are coming, but um, so far I am absolutely loving these. They're in the honorable mention category of my favorite hardware of 2020. I just haven't had them long enough that I feel like I could be like, yes, absolutely go spend $550 on these because that's how much these are. And that is a lot of money. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, a big, big thing for me is will they be able to edit video and podcast with no latency? And I have the cable and everything for that, so I think they should be, but uh, more on that later. So speaking of iPad accessories, my channel is sponsored by Paperlike. Paperlike is an iPad screen protector, but not just like any other iPad screen protector. It adds a matte textured layer to it. So what this gets you, it gets you re two really cool things. So first off, the textured layer. So if you use your Apple Pencil on the iPad, it makes it feel like you're writing on paper. It gives feedback. It gives a nice texture to using it. It's not plastic on glass, which is not a great feeling. Um, so this definitely gives it a nice, nice feel to it. The second thing this gets you is if you're working outside or if you have light, like I have this big light right here and my iPad's right here, without the paper like on it, I would have this big shiny reflection coming off of it because the iPad has a glossy glass screen. But with the paper like it gives it this matte screen so it cuts down on that reflection. So it's a lot easier to see your iPad in like direct sunlight or direct light. It's really nice to work with if you work outside a lot. So I highly recommend picking up a paper like I'm gonna put my link in the description below. So at least check it out, see for yourself, see if you like it. If this is something, you, if you use the Apple Pencil a lot or something, this would totally be for you. So let's get into some apps. Now, some of these apps are going to be talking about updates and features that came in 2020 and at the tail end of 2019. Um, and then some apps came out, they're brand new to 2020. So some are updates, some are brand new apps, and I'll try and go through them as we talk about them. So the first one I wanna talk about is Pushcut. Pushcut is an automation server utility. And, and what it got, this last year is amazing. So I got the ability to have this automation server stay all 
always on in the background. And you can use webhooks to trigger things like shortcuts and stuff to happen automatically on that device. So they can happen at specific times or uh, get when certain actions happen or if you use other automation services like Zapier and stuff like that. It's really a phenomenal thing. And if you guys are interested in how it works, let me know in the comments and I can make a whole separate video about it. This next one is probably going to be a little controversial but it's Fantastical. Now, I know not a lot of people are happy since they moved to a subscription model, but they added a bunch of features when since moving to the subscription model that I've really enjoyed. Um, especially a 2021 that, that was huge for me this year is the ability to put like Zoom links or go to meeting links or whatever in the notes of a calendar event. So it just puts a, a little button next to the calendar event that you can tap on and it will immediately go into that Zoom meeting. Also with this new version, they added calendar sets. Now, calendar sets is something I'm gonna have to kind of really think about the way I was using them. But uh, up until recently, for those that don't know, I've just left my day job. So I'm gonna be going full-time YouTube now. Uh, so I was using calendar sets to kind of um, separate my day job and YouTube life and personal life and things like that. Uh, now I'm gonna have to rethink the way I use those and stuff like that. But over this last year, it's been a handy feature for me to use. Scriptable is another really great automation utility. What I like about Scriptable is it's very open and free, but there is a little bit of knowledge you need to know going into it. You need to know JavaScript or at least kind of understand what JavaScript is. With one of its latest updates, it's added a gallery feature. So you can go through and see pre-made scriptable scripts. This gallery has been great to download these scriptable scripts and start editing them and tweaking them to the way that I want them to work. It also added a widget, which has been really great. One of those scripts that is in the gallery gives you the ability to see the air quality. Now, I live in California and I don't know if you all know this or not, but we had some really big fires ha happen here over the summer and the air quality has has been terrible. So I've been using this widget to kind of make sure the air quality is okay, see if I should stay inside instead of going for a run in the morning or whatever. It's been a really nice, handy utility to have. Highlights is a PDF research utility app. Now this was great, especially I use this a lot for my day job. Um, we would get uh, what's called white sheets, but basically they're just PDF documents with a bunch of information, usually like security information and things like that for software or hardware appliances or whatever. And I would go through and highlight things or take things out of there that I needed to reference or ask a vendor about or anything like that. It was an incredible, handy utility for marking up PDFs um, for like pulling out important information out of PDFs. It's not meant to be like a PDF editor or anything like that, but it is really great for if you get a lot of PDFs and you need to go through them and pull important information out. DataJar was a really important app for this year as well. So DataJar is this cool utility that's just meant to be kind of this database for data. I built a shortcut that's probably my most used shortcut. It's a clipboard manager. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description along with everything else. Uh, but what's really cool about DataJar is it stores information in there and it doesn't try and do anything like special with it. It doesn't like go, go like, oh, I'm gonna take this plain text and make it rich text, or I'm gonna take this image and try and turn it into a PDF, or take this PDF and try and turn it into a PNG file. It, it doesn't do anything like that. So I use this as a way to store text and then kind of pull it back later. So like I have links and stuff to like the newsletter I do or uh, my website or, or email I addresses or whatever stuff that I use often, I can pull from here, get the item and it copies straight to my clipboard. Or if I have something on my clipboard, I can add it to that database. It's been incredibly handy to use. Okay, so my favorite app, my favorite new app of 2020 is, it's Craft. Craft has been a fantastic note-taking app. Um, note-taking has been something I've been thinking a lot about lately. Uh, I tried Notion, I tried Apple Notes, I tried Bear. Uh, I was using Drafts for a while, but I was really trying to force Drafts to be something that it isn't. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of separating, and I'm gonna make a whole video about this, but the short story is, Drafts is my like short-term note-taking, like scratch pads, stuff I need to write down, um, stuff I'm going to publish quickly, like descriptions for the videos I write in drafts, 
or um, like a, a quick email or something, like something that is short term that I don't need to keep forever, I write in drafts. But craft is where I've been storing long term notes. So projects, video projects, research, links to things, apps I wanna check out, long term stuff that I, I, I wanna keep around for a while. That's what craft has been for me. Um, craft is very similar to Notion, but it's really early on. So it doesn't have everything Notion would have, but it has one thing Notion doesn't have. It's a native app. So that means it's fast, it's responsive, and it's not constantly having to re-download information from the web. It's hands down been my favorite app. It's been a fantastic 1.0 and they've been putting out more and more updates recently. So I honestly think they will catch up to Notion's like, like feature set in no time. It's, it's just been a great utility to use. So if you're somebody that's all in in the Apple ecosystem, Craft is a great app for you. So that's it. That is my favorite hardware and apps of 2020. I would love to hear from you. What is your favorite hardware or app or both that you have been using for 2020? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.